Okay, there we go. Um, let's pray, then we'll get started. Yeah, okay. Father, we thank you, Lord. We thank you for this day. We thank you for bringing us together in this manner. Lord, we pray that uh, spirit of revelation and wisdom that you would speak to us, Lord. Lord, we humble ourselves under your mighty hand, Lord, that, that you may exalt, that you may lift us up. Father God, we pray for revelation, understanding. Lord, we pray for uh, your word to be written upon our hearts, Lord. We pray for our eyes to be open, ears to be open, Lord, our hearts to be unlocked to, to receive from you, Lord, the greatest teacher of all. And Lord, Holy Spirit, we ask that even as you've come to guide us into all truth, Lord, we submit and we yield to your leading and to your guiding, even as you take us, Lord, uh, from where we are to where we need to be. We thank you in Jesus' master's name, we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay, so uh, we've been learning about the gifts of the Spirit. Um, we started with um, the gift of tongues, right? Uh, and we've been learning quite a bit uh, about that. Um, like some of the questions associated with it, why tongues? You know, um, would I know um, when, you know, when I have gift of tongues? You know, I don't understand it. So, you know, what, what good is it, etc. We've been learning about different kinds of tongues. Right. So what purpose does it serve? And I think uh, the last thing that we looked at was that uh, tongue serves different purpose. Uh, one is that um, we get personally edified in the inner man. Right. Each one of us, we get personally built up in the inner man. There is spiritual strength that is uh, that happens. Um, well, sometimes when we do not know what we should pray for, uh, then you know, when we pray in, in tongues, then there is understanding um, because it's the Holy Spirit who is praying um, that perfect prayer. So when we, are in a, when we are in a dilemma, I don't know what I should pray for. Then, you know, we begin, we can actually begin to pray in tongues. And uh, tongues also, we saw, act as a, uh, you know, as, as an intercession because we are making intercession for the saints it, uh, and... Uh, the Holy Spirit makes intercession, which means praying for um, someone, right? That is intercession. So we looked at that. And then um, we also looked at um, uh, the, the whole thing of uh, how, um, you know, when we pray in tongues, it's also a sign to the unbeliever, right? Someone who does not believe in Christ, does not believe in Jesus, um, because of um, the, the gift of the Spirit, which is specifically the the gift of tongues, it becomes a sign to the unbeliever. Okay, So what is a sign to the unbeliever? It means that the person who does not know Christ is drawn to Christ because he or she sees that, hey, this is something supernatural, right? And so they are drawn um, to Jesus, right? They, they might say, okay, how is this possible? How is this even, you know, it's not naturally or uh, you know, in the natural sense, it's not possible, and they are drawn to it. So we, we saw all that. Okay, so today, we, let's look at um, some more about uh, the gift of tongues. We see that in the Old Testament, it's not mentioned. In the New Testament, yes, several references that we looked at. Okay, now, um, um, let's look at Romans 8, 26, okay, 26 and 27. The Romans chapter 8. Verses 26 and 27. Okay, this is how it goes. Romans 8, 26. Likewise, the Spirit also helps in our weaknesses. Okay, who helps in our weaknesses? The Spirit, referring to the Holy Spirit. Okay, for we do not know what we should pray for as we ought to pray. Okay, which means that, hey, I don't know what I should pray for in this situation. Should I pray? Uh, against something? Should I pray for it? Right? I don't know what to pray for. Right? Should I go to this place? Um, should I, you know, should I go to APC Bible College? Should I not go to APC Bible College? You know, I don't know what I should pray for. Right? Now, because I don't know the mind of Christ, I don't know the will of the Father, so I don't know what I should pray for. Or I'm in two minds, doubtful. Okay. So it says, the Holy Spirit helps us in those moments. Okay. 
because we do not know what we should pray for with the understanding what should i pray for at those moments look at the rest of the verse so it says um, but the spirit himself makes intercession for us so intercession is praying for someone else the holy spirit prays for us makes intercession for us in those moments when we do not know what we should pray for it says with groanings which cannot be uttered okay groanings which cannot be uttered which means it's it's a kind of it's not intelligent words but these are sounds these are groanings which cannot be uttered into speech so the holy spirit makes intercession for us verse 27 now he who searches the hearts knows what the mind of the spirit is because he makes intercession for the saints according to the will of god okay so now he makes intercession for us for the saints who are the saints the believers right who are washed by the blood of jesus so the holy spirit makes intercession or prays for the believer how with groanings which cannot be uttered so there is a you know there is a sound there is a groaning and these are not words with meaning which means the human being understands but these are groanings okay so we see that okay when we do not know what we should pray for praying in tongues when we pray for the needs of others when we do not know you know what the needs of the people are well the well god knows the holy spirit knows what the mind of the spirit is he knows and those and therefore he prays those that pay perfect prayer okay okay um let me just share the screen just one second okay right so we see that um i'm just going through a few things here on what we what we see on screen okay Ephesians 6 and verse 18, okay? Ephesians chapter 6, verse 18. Um, let's go there. Okay, in your Bibles, Ephesians chapter 6, verse 18. Okay, what does it say? That chapter 6, verse, um, you know, verse 11 onwards talks about the armor of God. Yes or no? Yeah, you see that. It talks about the armor of God. What is armor? Huh? Armor, something that that protects, right? Something that protects us. It's uh, maybe when you say armored car, that means it's a car that is reinforced with, you know, maybe with steel or special material so that ordinary things cannot actually hurt. Or, uh, you know, maybe like armored car, heads of state, prime ministers will go in armored car because it has got bulletproof windows, like bulletproof sides so that you know anybody who wants to shoot or this thing it does not damage the car that much the person who's traveling inside is protected armored right so here it talks about the armor of god okay and this armor is for the believer okay. look at one of the things which is listed there uh, verse 18 praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit Okay, it lists down a lot of things, helmet of salvation, belt of truth, shield of faith, right? Everything talks about the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. And here in verse 18, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit. This is also one of the things which is listed there, prayer. But what kind of prayer? It says praying with all kinds of, uh, and all prayer and supplication in the spirit. So what does praying in the spirit mean? Or praying with the spirit? What does it mean? Right? Are you sure? Pastor, praying in tongues. Praying in tongues. So how can we say that, Gertrude? Like praying in the spirit or praying with the spirit is actually praying in tongues. How can we say that? Yeah, because uh, we are praying in the language of God. That is praying in the mm. language the Holy Spirit has given you. Yeah, suppose somebody were to ask you, you know, and, and tell you that praying in the Spirit is not praying in tongues. 
Okay, somebody says that praying in the spirit is praying as led by the spirit of God, which which we all you know we need to be sensitive to be led by the spirit of God. But if somebody says you know how can you make that connection? How can you say praying in the spirit, or praying with the spirit? You know that Greek word is the same interchangeably used there. How can we say that it is actually praying in tongues, right? So what would he say to that? Pastor, we have to pray in the tongues and also we have to pray in your understanding. Right. Now, my, my question is, if somebody were to ask this usage, you know, this verse, particular verse, Ephesians 6, 18, it says praying in the spirit. So can we say praying in the spirit is praying in tongues? And if so, how can we say that? Why, sh why can't we ma make that connection? Yeah, brothers, what do you think? Yeah, you. Yeah. How can we say that praying in the spirit is praying in tongues? Brother, it is a. It's the Sorry? gift of. Yeah, go ahead. It's gifts of the Holy Spirit where mm. God encourages us to speak in tongues. Mm. When we ask God for the gifts of the Holy Spirit, He will not gift us with something else. Yeah, yeah, Lucy. You know, I I, I get your point, what you're saying. Mm -hmm. But the, mm -hmm. the, the the question is a little more specific. How, we, you know? how can we say how that? do we confirm it? Is it? Mm. No, that how is... do we say? Praying in the spirit, that phrase, that usage of those words, praying in the spirit. How can we say that refers to praying in tongues, according to the Bible? What do you think? As we seen in the books of Acts, brother, when they were anointed with the Holy Spirit, mm. they were... Yeah, yeah. they were filled with tongues. the spirit, they prayed in tongues. Yes, yes, of course. No doubt about it. But how can we say praying in the spirit is praying in tongues? How can we say praying in the spirit is equal to praying in tongues? When we give voice. <laughs> you know, that phrase, that usage, praying in the spirit, is it praying in our own languages, like English, Hindi, Tamil, Kannada? Or is it praying in, you know, in other languages, like praying in an unknown tongue? Unknown tongue. How can we say that? Uh, Pastor, yes. I think playing in the in an unknown tongue, that unknown yeah. tongue is the language of the spirit. Right. So if you are praying in the spirit, then you are praying in tongues. Because the mm. tongues in the spirit uh, is the language because, of the spirit. Yeah, yeah, Kofi. So you know. Someone might say praying in the spirit as praying as led by the spirit of God. So the spirit of God can lead you to pray in your own language, you know, the language that you grew up learning, you know, English or. Um, okay, I see Daniel's response. It means let the spirit pray itself, not by our own flesh or mind. Hmm. Okay. Okay. Let's let's turn to. 1 Corinthians 14, okay, in our Bibles, let's turn to 1 Corinthians 14, where Paul is actually talking about praying in tongues, right, to the congregation, he's teaching them, and then he, he talks about his own testimony, and he says, you know, um, I pray in tongues, uh, I mean, he ends up by saying that in verse 18, but before that, you know, this is what he says, right, verse 15, what is the conclusion then? I will pray with the Spirit, that word with can be you know, looked at as in, just like baptized with the Spirit or baptized in the Spirit. So he says, I will pray with the Spirit. I will also pray with the understanding. I will sing with the Spirit. And I will also sing with the understanding. Okay, what is he saying? He's talking about two different things. Like he's contrasting two different things. He's saying, I will pray with the Spirit. I will pray with the understanding. So which means pray with the understanding is when my mind understands what I'm praying, I'm praying in a known language, right? I pray with the understanding. First thing he says is, 
I will pray with the spirit or pray in the spirit. We can look at it both ways. So what is he talking about? He's talking about where there is no understanding. I don't understand what I'm praying, right? So that is praying in tongues. And he also says, I will sing with the understanding, but I will also sing with the spirit. Again, he's talking about the difference between praying in tongues, praying uh, or singing in tongues and singing with the understanding. Like we can learn a song and sing it. That is singing with the understanding. But we can also sing in tongues. That is singing in the spirit or singing with the spirit. Right. So this particular verse actually gives us the difference between or he's differentiating between praying in tongues and praying with our own language. And the usage there is praying in the spirit or praying with the spirit. Okay, So every time we encounter that phrase, praying in the spirit, the way the early church understood it, especially you know, taught by Paul and, and the Corinthian church, the way they understood it is praying in the spirit is praying in tongues. Right? Praying in, with the understanding is praying in the language that I learned or my mother tongue. Somebody taught me that, and I grew up learning it, so that's the thing, right? So it's very important for us to know that difference, that praying in the Spirit or praying with the Spirit means praying in tongues, because in Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 18 that we saw, it says, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit. Who writes that? Again, Paul, the Apostle Paul writes to the Ephesian church, and he's talking about praying in the Spirit being one of the things that is part of the armor of God, right? So praying in tongues is also a vital part of the armor that, that protects us because we are praying the mind of Christ over every matter. We don't know certain things that we, you know, in the future maybe, um, you know, what is there out there, but we pray in tongues. We pray in the spirit. Okay, understood? So every time we encounter that phrase, praying in the spirit, it is according to New Testament scripture, it means praying in tongues. Now, will the Holy Spirit lead us to pray in our own language for certain things? You know, let's say, you know, um, uh, you know, maybe needs of other people. You know, pray in your own. Of course, the Holy Spirit definitely will do that, right? But that is praying as led by the Spirit of God uh, in your own language. But whenever we encounter that phrase, praying in the Spirit, it specifically talks about Praying in tongues. Okay, so if, if if there was a question, you know, how can this phrase praying in the spirit be praying in tongues? You know, this is a great scripture to go to, right? Where Paul talks about praying with your own language and praying in tongues, and he uses that phrase praying in the spirit or praying with the spirit. Okay. Okay. So um brother, yeah. brother once again, review of it, brother. I'm sorry. Can you uh, review once again about this topic? Yeah. So we look at uh, this um, scripture, 1 Corinthians 14, verses 15 onwards. Where uh, it's not 15, sorry. Yeah. Uh, hmm. Um, maybe we can even back up. You know, we can back up to verse 14 and say, For if I pray in a tongue, my spirit prays, but my understanding is unfruitful. Then he goes on to say, what is the conclusion? I will pray with the spirit, which means pray in tongues. And I will also pray with the understanding, which means in my own language, I understand what I'm praying. And he also says, I will sing with the spirit. I will also sing with the understanding. Okay. Now, why are we looking at all this? Because we encountered that phrase, praying in the spirit. So what does it mean? Right. That means praying in tongues. And Ephesians 6.18, we saw, talks about praying in the Spirit, praying with all prayers and supplications in the Spirit, you know, as one of the things that are listed as the armor of God. So, uh, so we need to understand that this is something powerful that God has given us, you know, praying in tongues. Okay. I hope that helps, Lucy. Uh, yes, brother. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Okay. We'll take a quick break um, and then come back. Right. Okay. <laughs> 